Welcome to this introduction to the Vision CMM. This is the 321 GLTP by Hexagon. I am not affiliated with Hexagon. Just giving you an overview here. So here's the machine. It says Classic Optive up top on the head portion, which is where the camera and lighting is stored. I'm showing you over on the big screen here, our PC Demos, we have the CAD model for this slide located there. And uh, this is the actual slide that we're working with. You can see it a little more close up here. There are some really tiny features on this. And uh, we're going to measure them. This CMM actually works much like a microscope. You can see some very small features. You can see the slide is set here on a glass stage. And there is a lighting source below it. There are also two lighting sources up in the head. This is the jog box. We just looked at the e-stop, start button, and there is a bunch of control in this joystick here. So you can see it's moving forward and back and side to side. And it works in relation to the head. So when you're looking at things through the software, it looks correct. And by twisting the grip, we're moving the head up and down, which acts as the focusing mechanism for this camera. Uh, additionally, there's a bunch of buttons down here. This one says done on it. It is your end of feature. And there is a, an LED here and on the top of the joystick allows you to go into fine mode so you can move things very, very slowly. Like you can see the head is barely moving up and down there. Alright, you can also put a touch probe on this. This is a magnetically coupled uh, touch probe adapter here. And this just sort of snaps into place and there's an index to ensure that it's in its correct orientation. And just to show you here, the head then acts as an arm and you can bring it down in fine mode to touch the top of the part and it will automatically retract when it touches. Normally you'd hear a little beep sound there too. Here I'm bringing it over to the edge of the part and bringing it in on its side and it's going to touch and retract. And we're doing this all very slowly. It's a tiny little probe. I wouldn't want to damage it. But mostly this is used uh, to measure 2D parts, I would say, uh, like this slide here. You can see the CAD model there. We're looking at the software. We have a CAD view and a live view tab at the bottom there. And you can see all of our code is written over in this edit window here, which I just expanded. It looks much like regular PC Demos, except that you have this live window here. So you can see what's going on through the camera. So I'm going to use the jog box now to bring the slide into view and twist the grip to bring it into focus. So now you can see some of the features with the light shining through the slide from the back. I'm just going to walk around the edges of this slide so you can see it's the real slide. And the slide is, you know, maybe three inches long by, I don't know, an inch and a half, inch and three quarter tall, something like that. It's not very big and there's a lot of really tiny features on it. There's some lighting sources here. We're showing off the top light. So that comes right down past the camera. And you can adjust these faders. Most of the time you adjust them when you're doing the programming. I'm just showing them off here a little bit. Now you can see we're looking at the top of the part as it's highlighted. And uh, I'm turning it back off. And there is a what's called a ring light here. It's not functioning from this control, but it's a series of LEDs on the bottom of the head that are around the opening. And that gives a different lighting to the part. And I'll demonstrate that at some point here during this. I'm going to turn the bottom light back on. You can see it has a green glow to it. And that seems to work well. There's also this little laser here. So if you're trying to wonder where you are on the part, you can light the laser and it'll point to where you, the camera is looking. You can also magnify here. So depending on the optic you have, you have, in this particular case, we have a 6x optical zoom. And then there's another... I don't know, 50x of digital zoom for a total of something like 200x. So you can really work your way down. 
Okay, so we're going to walk through this program here. I'm going to execute the program. And you can see now there's our execution. And it's looking for us to align the first hit target with the edge of the part. This is the manual alignment portion. There's this hit target here, and it has a little line there. What we want to do is bring that up to the edge of the part, right to the edge. And you see how quickly I overshot that. I'll go down to Find Mode, and I can bring that up very carefully. And once it's aligned with the edge, I'm going to press the Done button, and it's going to pull focus on that edge right there and align it with that hit target. And when it's done, it'll make a little chirping sound. Next, I'm going to walk this down this bottom edge some more because I'm looking for two hit points on the bottom. So I brought it down a bit. And once again, I'm going to, I'm going to go for that second hit point. I'm going to slowly align it with the edge here. And it's tricky to get it right on that line. And you want to get it pretty close. You don't really want to leave a lot of slop in that measurement. Although this will go through another alignment process when we're done here. And once again, I'm going to hit the Done button. It's going to pull a focus. And when it's done, it's going to change that hit target. You see now it goes from side to side. And that's a clear indication that it's going to be used on the side of the part. And now we're looking for our third hit point. So we're going to walk this down to the left side of the part here. And bring it up a little bit. Once again, we'll go into fine mode, and we'll walk this up very slowly to the edge. And when it's pretty closely aligned, I'll hit the Done button, and it will pull a focus. And it takes a couple of tries going down and back until it gets a good focus. Now that that's completed, it's going to go into the automated part of this routine, or what's known as Direct Computer Control, or DCC mode. It's now going to establish a top plane by increasing the magnification, turning on the top light, and actually focusing on the grains of the metal on that slide. And you wouldn't think those are there by looking at it, but with uh, strong magnification, it can actually see the grain of the metal. So it takes three hit points on the top of the part and then establishes a plane from those. Now we're going back out in magnification, changing back to the bottom light, and it's going to make a line across the bottom of the part here once it gets proper focus. And it's drawing a line there. It's a green line. I'm going to change this to grayscale so that you can see this happening a little better. So here we're pulling focus on the left side. And now you can see that green line being drawn up there. If there are any little pockets or voids or dust or anything, it will work around those. So now we're on to some features of interest on the top of the slide here. You'll notice it drew a circle around the area we're measuring. There's actually a little circle inside of that black area too. So you sort of have two uh, circles and it's looking for a region of interest between those two circles. If it can pull a focus, it will establish that feature and it will measure it. So I've gone around the four edges of this card. There are these alignment marks. And now we're going to move on to some other interesting things here. So we have a hexagonal shape here. It can do that. You notice I changed the lighting. I have bottom light and top light here to pull that shape. Okay, now we're working down to some circles. You can kind of see the outer and inner circles there establishing the region of interest. Uh, we're going to pull a line here. It'll do ovals. These are really tiny dots right here that you're looking at. And there's a whole series of, of holes here. And if I can pull focus on that first one, then all I need to do is click on every one of the other circles here. And it's going to use the same strategy of lighting and focus to pull off the measurement of these shapes. So it's going around. It's working on these pretty quickly. There are different strategies for focus. There are different strategies for lighting. It really depends a lot on what you're looking at, whether you can see through it or not. 
Obviously some of these features are just on the surface and there's no lights going to come through them. Here we change to more just bottom light and we're working on a square. And these holes are really tiny. I showed them to you in the slide to begin with and it's working on one of those tiny holes. When we're all done with the routine and we measured everything we want, we can pull up a report and it will show us what passed and failed, what its location is, etc. We can also look at a little status window here at the bottom. That's the basics. Thanks for watching.